Welcome again. Right now we're at Acts chapter 11, verses 1 through 18. Peter explains his vision again. And you know, you got to wonder why there's so many Christians that totally misinterpret the, the vision, even though it says over and over again what it means. So let's read this again. And I encourage you, those of you who didn't hear the last teaching on Acts chapter 10, I very much strongly recommend that you go back and listen to that because we go through this in detail. So let's get right into this. Acts chapter 11, verse 1. Now the apostles and the brothers who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. When Peter had come up to Jerusalem, those who were of the circumcision contended with him, that is, the Jews, saying, You went in to uncircumcised men and ate with them. Now, if you remember Acts chapter 10, verse 28, Peter makes it very clear that it is unlawful for a Jew to associate with or visit a Gentile. This is why the circumcision, the Jews here in Acts chapter 11, verse 3, had a problem with Peter going into Cornelius' house and eating with him. Verse 4, But Peter began and explained to them in order, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision, a certain container descending, like it was a great sheet let down from heaven by four corners. It came as far as me. When I had looked intently at it, I considered and saw the four-footed animals of the earth, wild animals, creeping things, and birds of the sky. I also heard a voice saying to me, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But I said, Not so, Lord, for nothing unholy or unclean has ever entered into my mouth. Some people believe that Jesus taught that it was okay to eat unclean food, such as pigs and lobsters and shrimps and such. But if that was the case, consider this. Peter was a man who was with Jesus extensively. He was one of Jesus' closest disciples. He walked and talked with Jesus for, they say, at least three years. Now, if Jesus did teach that it was okay to eat unclean food, don't you think Peter would know it by now? But we have evidence right before us, right here, that Peter thought that this was a strange thing. It's like, no way, Lord, am I ever going to kill and eat these unclean things, okay? I mean, nothing has ever went into my mouth that's unclean. Verse 9, But a voice answered me the second time out of heaven. What God has cleansed, don't you call unclean. This was done three times, and all were drawn up again into heaven. Behold, immediately three men stood before the house where I was, having been sent from Caesarea to me. The Spirit told me to go with them, without discriminating. These six brothers also accompanied me, and we entered into the man's house. He told us how he had seen an angel standing in his house, and saying to him, Send to Joppa and get Simon, who is called Peter, who will speak to you words by which you will be saved, you and all your house. Notice here, we are talking about a Gentile getting saved. Now, the whole principle of Gentiles getting saved in the Jewish mind was all but non-existent, okay? And as I said in the last session, you've got to read this in context. And what I mean by that is not just context, you know, scripturally speaking, but also context culturally speaking. You see, the Jewish people looked at the Gentiles and they considered the Gentiles to be, quote unquote, unclean animals. That's the reason why Jesus called Herod a fox and that's the reason why when the Gentile woman came to Jesus for a miracle, Jesus said, I'm not going to give the children's bread to the dogs. The children, speaking of the children of Israel, the Jews, the children's bread, talking about the food from God, the blessings of God. I'm not going to give the blessings of God to the dogs, to the unclean animals, to the Gentiles. That is the context here, okay? So when God said what God has cleansed, don't call it unclean, he's talking about people, 
We established that fact very strong in the last session. Peter is using this vision to answer the Jewish people who say, why are you going to the Gentile's house? It's unlawful for you to go to a Gentile's house and to eat with a Gentile. So how did Peter respond to that? By using this vision. Because Peter knew this vision was speaking about Gentiles, not literally unclean animals, okay? When it says what God has cleansed, don't call unclean, it means the Gentiles that have been saved, okay? The Gentiles that have been born again, regenerated by the Spirit of God. That is how they are cleansed. It's not talking about God cleansing cockroaches and slugs, okay? That's not what it's talking about. It's like, well, you know, God cleaned up the slugs now, now you can fry them up. That's not what it's talking about, okay? I mean, Peter says he saw the unclean animals here and the creeping things and birds, all these unclean things, okay, that he knew was unclean. But like I said before, and we're going to get to this, this dates back all the way to the teachings of Enoch. If you read the book of Enoch, there are different animals that represent different nations, okay? And so this is very, very significant, and it goes very deep, and we will get into this very deep. But God can cleanse a so-called unclean animal, a Gentile, by giving that Gentile the gift of repentance and to have that Gentile walk in the ways of the Lord and to be saved and to be right with God, okay? That's how God cleanses the unclean Gentiles. I mean, God's not concerned about cleansing houseflies, okay? So once again, verse 13 here, Peter says, He, speaking of Cornelius, told us how he had seen the angel standing in his house and saying to him, Send to Joppa and get Simon, who is called Peter, who will speak to you the words by which you will be saved, you and all your house. That is cleansing the Gentiles, cleansing the unclean animals, okay? Verse 15, as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell on them, even as on us at the beginning. Acts chapter 2, all over again. I remembered the word of the Lord, how he said, John indeed baptized in water, but you will be baptized in the Holy Spirit. If then God gave to them the same gift as us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I? that I could withstand God. When they heard these things, that is, the Jewish people who had issue with Peter going to a Gentile's house, when they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified God, saying, Then God has also granted to the Gentiles repentance to life. Notice it says here that repentance to life is a gift of God, okay? Some people think that to repent means just to say you're sorry or just to be sorry. That's not the truth at all. We read in the book of Hebrews how Esau sought repentance with tears, but he could not attain repentance. So you can be sorry to the point of tears and still not truly repent in the sight of God. Repentance is a gift of God. And I pray that each one of you who hear my voice would have that gift. That you would be able to say, I am new. I am a new creation in Messiah. All of the old is gone. All of the old sinful, selfish self is gone. All of the old is gone and all of the new has come. I am a brand new creation. You know, when I first got saved, one of my neighbors said to me, what happened to you? It's like a night and day difference. And I guarantee you, when you get saved, when you truly get born again, you would probably have people coming up to you and saying, wow, you're a different person. You are really different. What happened? Because when you're saved, you truly are. It says you are a new creation in Christ if you are truly born again by the Spirit of God. Seek Him and you will find Him. Call upon Him and He will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.